NerdErotic.com. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to NerdRotic. My name is Gary Beekler. I am live in San Francisco, California, and I just got back from the fall of Skywalker, and I am also the 7,000th person to be live streaming after uh, this film has, uh, has completed, I guess. Uh, so hello, greetings, thank you for joining me uh, and choosing Nerdrotic when there are so many uh, very good YouTubers live streaming right now, some of my friends, so uh, hopefully they keep them up on their channel and you can enjoy them all because it's going to be better than this film. It surpassed my expectations on how indescribably dumb it is. And it's, as related to The Last Jedi, I'm a bit, for one, I'm a bit speechless on how actually dumb it is, even though I knew what was going to happen because the leaks were 100, 1,000% correct. Uh, so I didn't need to take notes, which is great. I have my leaks available right here and I can just uh, actually just read them to you and that would be a review of the film because it plays out exactly how the leaks read. Ray gets up and does this. Ray does this other amazing thing. Somebody tells Ray she's amazing and then Ray does something amazing. And then Ben tells, oh, I'm sorry, Kylo tells Ray she's amazing. And oh, by the way, a bunch of people say Leia's amazing. We don't really talk about Luke or Han that much because they're not important, they're men. Uh, and yeah, so the first part of this will be spoiler free. I'll just give you my overall thoughts, uh, which really haven't changed. It's exactly how I thought it would play out because I'm very familiar, unfortunately, with Jar Jar Abrams' work. Uh, air quotes on the work part. Uh, he does a, uh, he, uh, there's a lot of work involved, uh, borrowing from other people, uh, better people, more talented people. You know, I'm wondering if Deborah Chow had directed every film in the Disney trilogy, uh, how it would have turned out. It probably would have been a lot better. It probably would have been a lot better. So I agree with my good friend, Jeremy from geeks and gamers, uh, both Jar Jar Abrams and Rian Johnson should be the change. They want to be step aside and let Deborah Chow direct star Wars from now on. Uh, if, uh, I reviewed the Mandal Mandalorian earlier today, that was a very, very good episode. Well directed, uh, well written, uh, mostly well acted. Uh, and then I had to finish my day watching this. So the pointless sacrifice of the Skywalker saga. I can't even call it that. That is a marketing term that Disney star Wars has come up with. So this can just simply be a category on Dim Disney plus and that uh, they have succeeded. They have taken mythology and turned it into a category on Disney plus. Uh, they have taken one of the greatest stories in uh, American history I mean, really, probably the greatest story in American history as far as film is concerned and flushed it down the toilet so they could get a few extra bucks so they can squeeze the blood out of the nostalgia turnip and we have The Rise of Skywalker. Now, the critics are out there trying to blame us for this disaster and that's their spin. It's almost like they got together and agreed upon a narrative, uh, maybe even, maybe even a narrative that came from Disney, if we want to play some 4D chess here. Uh, because if you notice, they don't really, the only thing they blame Disney for was trying to please the fans. Uh, which wasn't what they were trying to do at all. So I will start out by saying the identity politics wasn't in this. Uh, Ray was just an OP Mary Sue. Uh, I didn't really, I mean, I'm sure, yeah, there was some identity politics uh, because it's Disney Star Wars from Jar Jar Abrams and we'll get into that in the spoiler. But I mean, it's not, it wasn't like uh, The Last Jedi. Now, is this as bad or worse or better than The Last Jedi? Eh, I don't know. I think they all suck pretty much evenly. Uh, the Force Awakens sucks as much as The Last Jedi and sucks as much as The uh, Rise of Skywalker. Um, and they didn't need to. They didn't need to. These are characters that we could have 
liked, uh, especially Finn. Uh, they tried to do something with Finn. It didn't work. But r- this story, uh, as I said, it plays out exactly like the uh, leaks read. You think there's some connective tissue between scenes, and there just isn't. And that was my biggest problem with The Force Awakens. It's just a big, long trailer. And this one's a long trailer. And it feels every second of its two hours and 20 minutes. Now, I think 20 minutes are probably... Uh, the, you know, the effects, uh, people, uh, towards the end, the 1000 people in the credits, I did not stay for the credits. The minute this thing ended, I walked out and to my great disappointment, there was clapping at the end of this film. Uh, and you know, Jar Jar Abrams, the reason he is, uh, so popular in Hollywood is he is adored by normies. Normies absolutely love this guy. Now, I think the people who were there were probably the most enthusiastic Star Wars fans, and I won't say the whole theater clapped. I would say about half the theater clapped. Uh, There was some noticeable laughter in scenes there wasn't supposed to be. Uh, This thing is is just a mess. It's a mess through and through, and all it does is destroy Anakin's sacrifice, Luke's story, Palpatine is a joke now, is a is just a joke. And, um, when I do a proper review and, uh, listen, I was going to work on it tonight, but this thing deserves my full attention with a full night's sleep. So my review is probably not going to come out until Saturday or Sunday, or maybe even Monday, uh, because I'm going to take my time with this thing. Uh, I've got my, uh, it's really hard to, to, to do notes in, in a dark theater. Uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't recommend it, but I don't need them because I got the leaks. I got the leaks. Uh, was okay. We'll start out was, and again, I'm being very general here. I'll warn you, uh, for spoilers. I I don't want to spoil anything just in case there's somebody who lived under a rock and didn't hear the leaks. Uh, I'll give you ample warning. Was there anything I liked? Uh, Billy D Williams, Billy D Williams, uh, his, his moments in this, uh, I liked, um, there was a cameo I liked, um, uh, and again, we're going to get into spoilers, but, uh, and John Williams score, John Williams score was fantastic. And you know, the beginning crawl, if you don't read it, if you kind of squint and just look at the words, like if I take off my glasses, if you guys could see how I see the world without my glasses on, it's just a big blurry, it's a, it's a Jackson Pollock painting. That's how I see the world. So if you take, took off my glasses and I didn't actually read the crawl, but I listened to the music. I'm like, Ooh, that sounded like star Wars for a second. Now, of course it's mix- missing the Fox fanfare, which Disney owns right now. So they could do it, but they're just Disney. That's about it. <clears throat> There's the good. Um, uh, I, some people probably got well paid for this. Uh, some people were probably able to feed their children on this. So I'm happy about that. But uh, Disney, Disney could have basically repurposed this money to feed some starving kids in uh, in Africa or in South America, and it would have been better spent. This was a waste of money, time, resources, everybody's time who watches the film. Uh, Listen, I'm not going to pick on anybody individually. If you like this film, uh, okay, uh, that's fine. Uh, Listen, I'm willing to turn my brain off of uh, with certain stuff too. Uh, just, I can't, I can't go into a coma cause you would have to go to, into a coma to enjoy this film. I barely call it a film. It's an embarrassment to cinema. It's an embarrassment to star Wars. It's an embarrassment to George Lucas. I'm glad he did not go, uh, or wasn't invited. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, Doomcock, I think reported that he wasn't invited and well, Doomcock's reporting has been pretty impeccable lately. So, uh, hail to my good friend, Doomcock. I hope he's basking in his vindication. Uh, and we will talk about this more on the Inquisition. Whoo, man. Um, I would say that the last Jedi was more offensive to the star Wars saga. Initially, it set this, this film up. But Jar Jar Abrams is ultimately responsible because he's the one who started everything. And he left it so open, uh, he gave the keys to the castle uh, to a snotty 14-year-old kid named Jar Jar, or named uh, Rian Johnson, sorry, who 
basically took the Star Wars franchise, if it was a house and partied in it, uh, invited his friends and didn't clean up afterwards, you know, beer bottles in the bathroom, you know, Coke on the, on the kitchen table, stuff like that. Uh, and maybe uh, I won't go that dark. I've got some, uh, I'll keep the dark humor light. Never mind. So, um, yeah, so the, the access media is out there. The critics are out there trying to say that it's the fans' fault that Disney tried to make this film. It was This was not fan service. This was Jar Jar Abrams' service. He was servicing himself. He, he self-partnered throughout this entire film, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, it's no longer No Nut November, and uh, Jar Jar Abrams... Uh, was yeah, was like a 16 year old on uh, uh, on a certain website with the last word of hub. We'll just say that I'm trying to keep this clean. I got demonetized on a video today. Believe it or not, I got I, I never get demonetized, but my CNN video demonetized. I wasn't able to fight it or anything. Uh, so yeah, go after the mainstream media and look what happens. And probably I, the fact that I just said said that probably nailed this one so thank you all for showing up thank you all for being here uh i want to shout out to uh the we had i had some people show up at the meetup today it was nice we had a, a few guys there at the starbucks where i did my very first podcast across the street uh from the theater i watched uh, this disaster in and uh just what's up guys i will post a picture up on instagram and twitter later we had a good time uh something uh, it, it was uh, kind of funny that the, uh, the marquee said Star Wars and on the bottom it said bombshell. Uh, and if anybody's in San Francisco and wants to get rid of the H-E-L-L in that, you know, little ladder, be careful. Uh, it, it can say Star Wars bombs on the marquee. I, I did take a picture of that and put it on Twitter. Um, also, see this poster right here? Right, to, uh, th right there. Is there a there isn't a more accurate poster for a film ever? That's why I have uh, left this up. I think that pretty much says it all. Uh, but now we need to see your chat, so we'll pop that up later. But let's get to, yeah. So <clears throat> yes, execute order seventy seven. What a uh, Star Wars does suck these days, Travis Craft, and um, it's Disney Star Wars. I can't call it Star Wars. Star Wars doesn't exist. Star Wars died when Disney purchased it. Again, I thought it was a great idea. I thought Kathleen Kennedy was right for the job, but boy, was I wrong, and so was Disney Star Wars. Um, you know, <clears throat> I don't, I, you know, I, I've heard the excuses that we tried. We tried. We did our best. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't hire the right people. You, th you thought you could uh, s spend some of that goodwill to help turn it into a platform uh, because you thought Star Wars fans were dumb enough to suck up anything. And look, quite frankly, some of them were. I hate, to, I hate to say that. You know, we're all dumb at some point in our lives, so I'm not saying I'm free of that. But uh, in, the, in the words of Ichibaka, Disney Star Wars is dumb and Rise of Skywalker is a dumb film. And yes, it's dumber than The Last Jedi. It is a straight up dumb film that's meaningless, pointless, meandering, uh, worse than any Transformers film. I'm trying to think uh, it's just that bad. Um, I cringed through a lot of moments, especially the Carrie Fisher moments. It's not her fault. She's not around anymore. But what they did with her was, uh, was not only, it wasn't a, it was shameful. It was shameful what they did to Carrie Fisher. And, um, I, you know, I just, I gotta make sure everything's hooked up there. I was embarrassed for her family and I cringed at those scenes. And when we get into the spoiler territory, I will explain it to you, um, and I tried to go in there with an open mind, but listen, I'm a human being. I had a lot of baggage walking into this. So it would have taken a miracle for me to like this movie. And if it was good, I would tell you. Um, if you like seeing spaceships fly around for no apparent reason, going on a meandering MacGuffin chase, then this is the film for you. And yes, this was an episode of Alias. And when I get to my proper video review, I'm going to show you, because I've watched Alias. I was actually really into that show for a long time. I can show you 
in particular, in particular scenes where Jar Jar Abrams ripped off himself. <laughs> it's really, it's really bad. Um, they did make an attempt at fan service, but when you think about Palpatine being back at all, uh, that's not fan service. You're, you're not, you're not pleasing any fans. Uh, I never bought into Ray as a character and she is just, uh, you know, Jeremy John said it. She is ridiculously OP. There are a bunch of new force powers that if they existed, uh, in earlier star Wars films, we wouldn't have needed to even destroy a Death Star. Uh, the film could have been over in the first five minutes. Uh, Ray, on her own, has learned a bunch of Force powers. Now, apparently she was trained by Leia, but Leia's not a master. Um, and there are, I mean, there's not plot holes, there's plot wormholes. Like, the plot wormholes, like, go back in time and screw up other Star Wars movies. And I think they uh, accidentally screw up other movies, you know, like Nolan's Batman. I think that that was some collateral damage. It's so freaking stupid. Uh, so I'm going to get to you guys a little bit and then I'll get into the spoiler section and we'll just go over uh, the leaks. I, I've got, uh, I've got the, I've got them right here, ready to go. And that will be my notes because again, and when I say it plays out like the leaks read, I mean that literally, I mean it like as you're reading the leaks, that's how things develop on screen. Again, no connective tissue whatsoever. Things just happen. They just ha and the, and the thing they need is just magically there. I mean, forget the fact that Luke was there's a certain object that Luke and and Lando were looking for for 30 years and eh, but Ray finds it like that. You know, because she's a girl and there was a, a real cringe scene where two girls meet each other and all of a sudden they're like best friends. They're besties. Um, the space horsies was uh, as bad as you uh, thought it was. And by the way, you've seen most of this movie. Uh, you've seen most of this movie. Oh, but one scene was not in there that you've recently. So they released a clip of a scene that's not in the movie and it's a clip they have released in the last 48 hours or well, we'll say 72 hours and it's not in the film. Also, you can tell what scenes were cobbled together at the last minute. I mean, uh, some of the shots, uh, if you go see this film and you see a, a ridiculous close up shot and you're like, where the hell did that come from? That is your reshoots. Uh, they had to do a lot of trickery to hide the clumsy editing, the, some of the worst editing I've seen in a blockbuster film uh, in, in my entire life. And that's, that's a long one, you know, longer than, you know, 50 years. Um, I, uh, I used to edit professionally and this is the worst edited Star Wars film. Uh, it's the worst edited film I've seen uh, Disney attach their name to, ILM attach their name to, Lucasfilm attach their name to. And, you know, this is you know, the home of Michael Kahn, you know, the, one of the greatest edited films of all time, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay, there's one scene where you can see the little piece of wood where it knocks over the truck. So what? So what? It's still a perfect film. Disney editing. Well, you know what? Disney tries to edit reality. They try to make truth. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to read a couple of super chats and then we're going to get into the spoiler section of this review because we need to. And, and again, I'm going to unfortunately have to somehow see this movie again so I can do a proper review. My memory is not what it used to be. So, uh, we'll get to, uh, by the way, damn, a lot of people here, man. It is late. Aren't you people supposed to be in bed? Thank you for joining Nerdrotic. Kari P for $10. Oh, the movie's bad. I've been reading the reviews and watched some reviews. Thoughts. Unfortunately, the leaks are true. And so everything leaked happened in the film. It did word for word, word for word. It, and we will go over those in a few short minutes. Uh, we will go over those. Uh, C Jam, C Jams NZ for five New Zealand dollars from Middle Earth. Greetings, my friend. Thank you for the donation. I greatly appreciate it. And by the way, just a big shout out to Adam Child, who traveled to visit me today. That was an honor beyond words. 
Um, oh, I, I, just in case. Um, so when I do meetups, I, I love doing meetups. I love meeting people. If anybody's in San Francisco, drop me a DM. I will buy you a cup of coffee. I would never, ever, uh, never, and you're supposed to never say never, but I would never, ever charge you guys for a meetup. And if I do, I want you to leave me uh, because my head will have gotten way too big. So yeah, if you want to uh, come and hang out sometime, just let me know if I'm available. Coffee, dinner, shit. Yeah, let's do it. And I would never charge you 25 bucks a head. Just like a certain YouTuber did. How embarrassing. How utterly embarrassing. Um, Rosetta, Rosetta. Okay. Rosetta for one, the strobe effect was in the beginning and yeah, it's a good thing you weren't there. Hope you're still sane after watching the, this, uh, the ridi, the ridi, the ridi, uh, it sucked. I'm still sane because I had friends there and I have a lovely wife to come home to and cry on her shoulder. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't cry. It's sad. It's actually sad. I, I was bummed when I walked out of this film. I was, when I walked in, I was all, oh, man, I can't wait for the review, piss and vinegar. And when I walked out, bummed. Just, I mean, it just revisited The Last Jedi, bummed. Like, it didn't have to come to the, it didn't have to be this complicated. They didn't have to inject a bunch of identity politics into Star Wars. It didn't have to be like this. They didn't have to attack fans. Uh, they they actually had to work very hard to destroy the biggest franchise of all time. And there will never be another franchise like this, folks. The way corporate structure is in Hollywood, we'll never get this again. And it sucks. You know, there's a reason why we've never, we haven't have had another Beatles and we're not going to have another Star Wars. Rosetta, Rosetta Allen, thank you for the $2. Thank you for the $5. Mecca said it gave her a migraine and made her eyes hurt and she doesn't have a history of seizures confirmed and good. Oy, the sanity. Um, I had a migraine when I walked out of The Last Jedi. So I'm not surprised Mecca had uh, a, a migraine and I, I don't get migraines. I don't get headaches. And I generally don't get sick. So when I walked out of The Last Jedi, I thought I was like dehydrated. But no, I just, it was something I loved for decades, just being completely shat on. And, you know, listen, uh, I'm going to hear it. I'll hear it tomorrow. Uh, why don't you just grow up? Why do you care so much? Um, don't worry what I care about. You know, you know what I'm saying? That, you just don't concern yourself with what, 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 what I care about. I'll talk about what I want on my channel. And, you know, you don't have to click on my face. That's all, you know. Uh, but if you have to ask that question, then you don't understand nerds. Uh, do we care too much about stuff? You know, that's that's for us uh, to be concerned about. Uh, we'll care about what we'd like to care about. And how much is none of anybody's business. There is no shame to my game. I'm 50 and I have action figures on my wall. Please. Uh, regalia 11, uh, Luke had his hand cut off. What did Ray lose? What did Ray lose? Maybe a strand of hair, maybe a strand of hair. Um, she lost the plot. Uh, no, she lost nothing. Uh, she, she put her hopes in a, in a, she, she loved a bad boy. She put her hopes in the wrong man, but she's Jesus now. She's effing Jesus now. That's a force power, by the way. Qui-Gon was a puss. Jeez. Uh, C. Jams NZ for $5. Robot Chicken Star Wars canon greater than Disney canon. Indeed, you are correct. Brett Carlton for $2. Watch it at home. Don't spend money on this shite. You are correct. Thank you for the $2, Brett. I did not spend any money on it. Okay? Got my ticket for free. Got my ticket for free. Okay. We're going we're gonna to go over some spoilers. Now, I'm not going to go over every second of this film. We'll just go over some, some big points that really stood out to me. I mean, I mean it's just, again, it's generally bad. Uh, there is no offense worse than the way they killed Han and the way they killed Luke, except for the way they did Leia. And uh, again, it was shameful. And anybody who walks out of this and thinks it isn't, it was shameful what they did to Carrie Fisher. Uh, and the reason they did it uh, was to, I mean, it's great if you want to honor her. That's fine. 
but once you find out how she died, and once you think about it, uh, it's shameful. It's shameful. Okay, uh, let's find... Uh, is it right here? Boop. There we go. Okay. We've got... Uh, so, I'm just going to read you a paragraph or two. And this is exactly how the film plays out. Uh, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren has been aware of a dark power behind his predecessor and former master, Snoke. Kylo has been spending his time as leader of the First Order with the purpose of locating this power. General Hux and Pride have been following Kylo around on his quest and are beginning to get very frustrated with what they see as a fool's errand. Wrong. Actually, you know what? I have to say the leaks are too detailed. The leaks are better than the film. They did not provide that context at all. The film starts out with a slow motion montage of Kylo Ren killing a bunch of natives. And he finds a chest that leads him to the Wayfinder. Then after he kills the natives, he goes and finds Palpatine. Just like that. Like that's how the movie starts. Uh, the first words spoken in the film are by Palpatine. The crawl in the beginning, by the way, again, hail my friend Doomcock. The first, the first spoilers he leaked were, uh, gosh dang, months ago, almost a year ago, maybe. Remember the, the video he did on the signal, on the signal being broadcast? Well, that one was right too. So Jedi Paxis has to work at Lucasfilm. Uh, any guesses on who Jedi Paxis is? Maybe it's John Boyega. Uh, maybe it's J.J. Abrams. I don't know. Again, 4D chess. Maybe it's Bob Iger. Maybe maybe it's George Lucas. Maybe George Lucas is Jedi Paxis. That would be... Oh, man. You know, you think about it. Think about it. George Lucas is Jedi Paxis. Good one, George. All right. So, again, I will read these to you, and uh, I was wrong. These are actually more detailed than the film. So they do not provide any context that Hux and Pride are getting impatient with a fool's errand uh, at all. Uh, they see this as a waste of First Order time and resources. Well, that obviously got cut out. When we catch up with the villains of our story, Kylo is leading an assault on this planet with the purpose of finding Darth Vader's Wayfinder device. According to my source, the Oracle sequence has been removed. It was Kylo... Uh, walks toward a castle tower described to me as similar style invaders uh, in Rogue One and finds a wayfinder in a chest. No, he just uh, gets the gets it out of a chest. They cut that out. He has PTSD flashbacks of Luke and Han. He do, Han he does, but later in the film, uh, Kylo then hears a voice that the audience should be able to identify as Palpatine's calling Kylo to come to him. So Palpatine has just been kicking back kicking back for 30 years and then he just decides to broadcast himself with a giant Sith fleet that they lightly explained has been built by stealing children but they never explain it oh by the way they never explain how Palpatine survived and you know what his injuries were uh, his fingers were burnt he, he was missing like four fingers so when, when Palpatine fell at the end of Return of the Jedi he lost a few digits that's it. Uh, and it's uh, it's pretty embarrassing. Uh, he actually looks a little healthier uh, than he did in... Uh, he's got black lipstick on, so I think uh, Palpatine was just off listening to The Cure and going through his goth phase, maybe? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, do, do kids go through goth phases anymore? Probably not. Probably not. Showing my age there. Reshoots have apparently amended uh, Ray's mental training to focus around... Uh, trying to communicate with Jedi's... Okay, so I'm going to read this to you, and this is exactly how it happens in the film. Reshoots have apparently amended Rey's mental training to be focused around trying to communicate with past Jedi who have come one, who have become one with the Force. So after Kylo Ren meets Palpatine, Palpatine says, uh, yeah, I have been all, I've been the voices in your head all along. Uh, by the way, he's, he made Snoke. Snoke was a clone. So there was a little vat of Snoke's, which, and that was it. And that was it. So Snoke was just an avatar. 
for Palpatine, and that was all the explanation you get. Then we get to Ray, and she is sitting. Um, she's sitting uh, Native American style. Is that how I can say it now? Uh, and she's got rocks spinning around her, and she's just being super OP. And she's trying to she's trying to communicate with uh, Luke and other Jedi's, and she can't. She gets frustrated, so she goes running around, and that's when she throws her little lightsaber around and crushes poor BB-8. Then she has scenes interacting with Carrie Fisher, and these are utterly terrible. I, it, I don't think I can even watch this again. So it is so forced in that they have to create, I mean, they have to make these, I had to, I'm going to have to like listen to them again because they had to make up these ridiculous sentences to, to get their way around what lines Carrie actually used. So they have to go, you know, um, there's a banana behind my ear and I got to go and find it behind the drawer with the book about uh, the invention of uh, Acuras or something, you know, it's just some random shit. And then Carrie Fisher goes, yes. Yes. So Ray is training and she comes up to Carrie Fisher and she goes, I'm really frustrated with my, with my training. I'm not able to communicate, uh, with, with past Jedi. Uh, and I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. And then Carrie Fisher goes, believe in yourself. Something like that. You know, I mean, it's just, it's terrible. It, it's, I, it's indescribably bad and they're not making eye contact. You can tell she was, uh, there was some digital trickery and by the way i will find the article where they said they were not going to do any digital de-aging digital trickery they were going to use carrie fisher's unused shots okay so she is barely in the movie she says about seven or eight lines that's it and we'll i'll just tell you right now so princess leia dies just like she does in the leaks she dies from overdosing on the force same way Luke died. It had to, it, she OD'd on the force. Now I want you, I don't want to say it out loud because I don't want to disrespect the memory of Carrie Fisher, but we all know she had demons. I had demons. We all have demons. Uh, and we all know how she died and to have her dying ODing on the force, uh, I thought was a bit tasteless Disney star Wars. Uh, not even a bit tasteless. It's a shame. It's it's a it's an abomination. Uh, but you know what? Milking that nostalgia turnip. So uh, then they, I mean, it's just a MacGuffin chase. That's all it is. So they're looking for wayfinders, and they're going to the party planet, and they have the rave, and Lando Calrissian just happens to be there. Um, and then we get this force connection thing, and apparently now. Through the Force connection, you can pass physical objects. Like Kylo Ren is able to grab a necklace. Kylo Ren can pass, or a Ray can pass a lightsaber to Kylo Ren through their Force Skyping. Uh, that's not how the Force works. Isn't that, I mean, that was the one good line from The Force Awakens. Uh, Jar Jar Abrams doesn't care. Remember he said, F it, I'm going to do what I want. You know, Red Letter Media's time travel theory would have been better. And again, if Emperor Palpatine was sitting on a throne of Ewok skulls with zombie uh, Sith Ewoks around him, that would have been better. I'm not joking. Yes, there was Ewoks too. There's Ewoks. Uh, let's get to another part. The new version of this scene seems to put Kylo's volatility, uh, volatility and anger front and center instead of more or less having... A conversation like before, Kylo now apparently threatens Palpatine point blank with his lightsaber after making his way over to him. Uh, curt words are apparently traded back and forth between the two. It is, and not even that. So Kylo Ren confronts Palpatine. Palpatine says, I have been behind this all along. So Kylo Ren's supposed to be pretty decent with the Force, but he never sensed Palpatine once. They don't explain why he doesn't sense Palpatine once. And honestly, you know, I know like people like Mahler and stuff, and I, I look forward to like Critical Drinkers uh, review and Mahler's review just as much as anybody else. But um, I mean, uh, it's going to be nine hours long, but it's, when I walked out of this film, it felt like I was, uh, I don't, I, I used the term when I walked out of the film and I don't want to say it here. Uh, it, it felt like you were bullying 
it, it, you know what? I'll use a bad analogy. It's like a college kid bullying a junior high kid. There's another way to put it, but I really don't want to put it that way. Um, it, it's it, it, it's almost not worth picking on. You know, like when Doomcock and I stopped reviewing Batwoman because it was just too dumb to review. This is what this feels like. It, it's it's embarrassing. It, this is an embarrassment. Um, and it's not even like they've made it so bad now. I'm like, I'm not even angry anymore. I'm disappointed. I'm sad. And I'm ready to move on because this, uh, man. Um, so Palpatine just the, 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 the exchange between Kylo and Palpatine is just, Hey, I've been behind this all along and I'll give you an empire now. Okay. You can be the leader. Okay, fine. So, again, the leaks explain that there is a force dyad and there might be some connection or, or there, there might be some plan that Palpatine has to lure Rey and Kylo and get them together. Nope. Nope. Palpatine is Rey's grandpa and he wants to give her the throne. So Palpatine survived Return of the Jedi. He lost like six... No, nah, he lost like four fingers. Okay, he's he, he fell... To his, uh, he, not to his death, he just slightly injured, uh, waited 30 years, didn't tell anybody, built an armada that who, how did he pay for a uh, uh, hundred star destroyers? That's just what we see. It's more than that. Each one of them, by the way, has a Death Star cannon on him. And he was going to give it to his granddaughter. Uh, when usually a grandpa gives his granddaughter like a $12 check, which would have been funny if Palpatine gave her a $12 check and a throne for the empire. But no, everything again, even the Sith were there for Rey. Not just the Jedi. A thousand Jedi's live in Rey now, and a thousand Sith live in Palpatine, and he wanted to give that to her, and that would have actually probably brought balance to the force. You would have had all those Sith inside of uh Rey and all those Jedi having what a big Jedi Sith orgy inside of Rey because she is the bestest ever. So Palpatine wanted to give everything to Rey. It wasn't like some plan to lure Kylo and Rey together to, to suck their energy out, which he does do, by the way. Uh, he does it so well, it changes his wardrobe. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He gets like a little ascot thing and it's, uh, it's freaking terrible. It's terrible. Um, so F Finn and Poe are... Uh, they're just there as window dressing. I remember Poe saying, you know, being mad at Ray for being gone. Uh, it, yeah, he's all, you need to be here because you're the best fighter we have. You don't realize how awesome you are until you're just being awesome. And we need you here being awesome, not somewhere else being awesome. Don't be so selfish, Ray. You need to give us some of your awesomeness too. Uh, that was pretty much Poe. Um, uh, Poe, uh, they tried to like have some drama between him and Finn and they were supposed to be all familiar. Like they were buddies like this whole time. And, you know, and Ray doesn't hang out with them very long. She, she goes on one mission. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> so that point, uh, I'm sure everybody's brought this up. So when they're on the party planet and they're being chased by the stormtroopers, and they can fly now, they can fly now. And Ray is shooting at them with a blaster when she can pull a ship down. She that's she does do that. She has a prisoner transport that she thinks Chewie's on, and she blows it up. Uh, now they explain this away, and I guarantee you this is a reshoot. I guarantee you. So after she blew up the transport. Uh, Kylo witnesses this because, you know, this is when the, the trailer where Kylo goes down in his TIE fighter and charges at Rey without firing his weapons or using his force abilities. So when Rey, after she cut, she cuts off his wing, he crashes, survives. Uh, then the prisoner transport, which supposedly has Chewie on it, is getting away and Rey decides to use the force to pull it down. And then Kylo Ren is, starts pushing to push it away. And then lightning comes out of Rey's hands and it blows up. And then Kylo looks all scared. Well, later they do a, a scene where Kylo says he was pushing her to do that. That was one of those reshoots. I'm sure after a, those not those test screenings that didn't happen, you know, uh, uh, it, it, 
I got I to gotta say, like, if there's a reshoot, there must have been some sort of test screening, or why would you do the reshoot? I mean, I wouldn't trust Jar Jar Abrams to be a very good judge of uh, himself. I, I guarantee you there's no shot that he's done that he doesn't like. So uh, it's just overpowered. It's dumb. Uh, the scenes are uh, very choppy. She does, she saves the sandworm. She heals it. And of course, in tonight's baby Yoda episode, um, called the reckoning, by the way, uh, what a coincidence that the Mandalorian episode is called the reckoning on the day that the fall of Skywalker comes out. So baby Yoda heals in that one. And honestly, the force, the healing force power, uh, it makes way more sense in the plot of the Mandalorian than it did in the the uh, fall of Skywalker when she heals a viper sandworm, you know, which didn't eat them. It, it ate uh, Uche, uh, but it didn't eat them. Uh, so um, there was a couple of, so yes. Yeah, so Hux is stupid. He is a spy just because he's mad at Kylo Ren. And that's all the explanation you get. Uh, General pride is, kills him uh the world uh, the the galaxy feels very small it's just finn poe uh amy Aki's character later uh actually the emperor's not in this very much he's just uh in a couple little scenes and at the very end uh and that's it and they run into lando who just happens to be on the planet uh that they needed him to be on they find that Okay, the dumbest MacGuffin was that Sith blade that they conveniently write the story of the person they killed on after they kill them, even though they didn't kill Ray's parents. Oh, and they also leave maps on it. So, you know, that's what I do with with my weapon. I, I like to, you know, just etch out all the crimes I've committed with my weapon and leave a map to where you need uh, to find me. I think that's a really good idea. Uh, that sounds like something Jar Jar Abrams would come up with. Whew. Um, Luke Skywalker is barely in it. And this is the scene where there was, uh, there was laughter from the audience. So when Ray tosses the lightsaber, when she's having a little hissy fit, Luke Skywalker's arm comes out of a burning tie fighter. And he, and he looks like, uh, he looks like a comic shop owner, to be honest with you. He looks like the comic shop guy from, uh, the Simpsons. All he needed was a ponytail. Somehow, some way Luke Skywalker's hair grew in death. Uh, and that's, he's not the only one, by the way. So his hair got longer being a force ghost. He walks out of a burning tie fighter, gives Ray a pep pep talk. And by the way, this fit in this film, Leia is the master even over Luke. Uh, and, and the, the one scene we get with Luke, they, uh, I'm sorry. They, they, they talk about Leia. They talk about Leia and Leia's lightsaber, and they did do a de-age scene where Luke and Leia are training, and of course, Leia kicked his butt, uh, so we had to have that. Uh, we had um, uh, Boba Femme show up, and it's Poe's ex-girlfriend, and she gives him a pep talk, uh, and... You know, it's kind of surprising that they had a man give give uh, Ray a pep talk, but it was talking about what Leia would have said. So it's kind of speaking through her anyway. Uh, so Luke Skywalker is in it for all of a uh, couple of minutes. Oh, and he lifts his his X wing out of the water as a Force ghost. So at this point, it's just dumb. They don't even care. So the the effort, I'm gonna do what I want. Uh, those are famous last words from Jar Jar Abrams. You never want to hear him say that again. Uh, let's get to some of your questions here, but, uh, again, you know, uh, the movie, is it really that all, I mean, it's all over the place, but it's just pointless. Uh, when you get to the final battle, it's utterly pointless. Oh, I almost hit the wrong button there. That would have been bad. Uh, okay. So we're going to get to you a little bit here. Un momento, por favor. Uh, uh, uh. Wow. Okay. So we will get back to the review. I just want to get to a couple of questions. So Luke's in it for two minutes. Leia's in it for about three minutes. Lando has some good time. Billy D. Williams is great. There is one little scene what's kind of funny. And Wedge Antilles is in it for a second. Otherwise, the other two hours and 19 minutes are complete 
shit. Don't waste your time. Don't see this movie. Don't don't spend money on it. Uh, you'll just encourage Disney. I'm guessing it's going to probably do pretty well. My theater was sold out, but it was not full. It was 75% full, but there was tw- uh, about 20 to 25% empty seats. Uh, I didn't get a chance to ask the person at the theater what was up with that. I tried, but she looked extremely busy, and I think she was by herself. Um, so I, uh, I don't know. I, I'm not going to go back and pay to see it. I'm going to have to find other ways. Um, but, uh, yeah, just, it's really, it's not funny. It's not fun. Uh, it's not as dark and dire as the last Jedi is. And I think that's, that's one of the only things that might be a slight improvement, but I don't think so. I think it's all schlock. Um, I'm trying folks, but like, I'll be honest. I was not going to like this thing unless uh, Stanley Kubrick came back from the grave and knew how to direct a Star Wars film or, and Gary Kurtz came back from the the grave and was able to produce it. Maybe Um, Adam child. There he is. What's up for five, uh, $5. Hey Gary, good meeting you tonight. Can you please message me the picture you took of us tonight? You can just send it uh, on a DM on Twitter. Thanks. Yes. Uh, actually, I'm going to post it on Twitter, man, so you can you can get it off get off that and Instagram. And it was great meeting you, Adam. Uh, have a safe trip home, my friend. Uh, Daniel for ten dollars. Thank you, Gary, for taking one for the team. You're a champion. Still have never seen the Last Jedi. Is a oh, good. Don't. Is it worth watching for a laugh? No. Uh, if one bought a ticket to Cats and went into the wrong theater. Oh, as far as uh, the Rise of Skywalker, no. No, you're better off. I wish I hadn't seen The Last Jedi. So if you if you see my Last Jedi review, um, at the end of it, towards the end, I say I'm never talking about Star Wars again. It's dead to me. Uh, I used to have a bunch of Star Wars action figures on the wall behind me, and uh, I gave them all to my patrons. I have not purchased anything Star Wars. I own three Star Wars things, and they were gifts. I have George uh, George Lucas uh, at his the the AFI Institute um, uh, that did a thing for George Lucas and they gave away a gift bag. I got the George Lucas gift bag, which is a set of DVDs. Um, I've got vintage curtains that were a gift from Mrs. Nerdrotic, uh, and I've got an, a, a, the first poster ever produced that wasn't a movie poster of Star Wars that was painted by my friend William Selby. I have a copy of that. That's it. Uh, those are gifts. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Melodic Noob, welcome to the proto molecule level. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you. And membership stuff is happening this weekend. Uh, the unrelenting male gaze for a dollar ninety nine painfully honest tech called uh, you out, bro. Um. Uh. Who who's did who's painfully honest tech? Is that a person? Uh, if people want to call me out, that's fine. I mean, I say a lot of things, uh, uh, for, I have to cover a lot. I, I, well, I've got hours of talking. I'm sure I've said something that rubs somebody the wrong way. Uh, who's painfully honest tech though. Uh, but if they call me out, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I've been called out a lot, but, uh, the unrelenting male gaze, you keep gazing my friend, uh, CB Norwood for a dollar. Thank you very much. I appreciate the donation. The rookie critic, the rookie critic for $2. Hey man, uh, just got out myself. It moved, uh, at 1000 miles an hour. Yeah. The editing was, was terrible. It was, uh, it was terrible. Um, they, there was a shaky cam. It was a bunch of shaky cam and it was just boom, 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 boom. So that's JJ's gimmick. He keeps things moving. He keeps throwing things at you. People are going, woo. I mean, like, and it's just, it's, it's on speed. It's Star Wars on speed. There's no moments uh, to take a breath. There's no resonance with the resonance with the scene. There's no quiet. And there is quiet moments in Star Wars. There's little quiet moments. There's nothing in that. Nothing that uh, gives you, uh, there's no sense of humanity in this. Uh, You know, I've said the Mandalorian plays like a cartoon. I mean, listen. I know it's kind of a harsh criticism. It plays like a great cartoon. This plays like a very bad video game, like a very bad video game. So uh, we're going to get to this a little bit here. Um, And welcome to all the people who are here. 
Uh, McGuff- <laughs> Matt Guffin for ten dollars. My theater was dead quiet. Miami is forced out. I will say they uh, the movie played like a Force Awakens sequel more than the Last Jedi. To be honest, yeah, it did. I loved JJ throwing Ryan under the bus, but he uh, he almost had a spy. Um, I I think he did throw Ryan under the bus, Rian under the bus, uh, but I you know it it. it it didn't even feel like the Force Awakens. The Force Awakens at least took moments in between. Seasons. They were good, uh, but the Force Awakens is is a better piece of shit than this was, for sure. Um. All right, so we'll get into uh, these things are so spot on. I think now that I'm reading them, they're over detailed now. Uh, the dagger uh, has writing on it in a language that nobody I can identify, and that's the Sith dagger. It's then handed over to 3PO, who identifies the writing as a Sith language, but he can't translate it because it's against his programming. So they have that scene where I'm taking a last look at my friends. That's the only quiet moment in the film, and you see pretty much all the context of that scene. That's all the setup. Um, there's no sense of friendship. There's no sense of anything. There's no sense of stakes. You don't ever think for one second that people aren't going to succeed. There were deaths, but they were meaning like, uh, Greg Gutfeld, you know, uh, it's a, another portly X-wing pilot dies. Uh, and that's it. That's it. I mean, uh, even, even, uh, Boba Femme survives, uh, when you think they do blow up a planet. Yes, they blow up a planet. Um, uh, there's giant chunks of the Death Star. And again, the Death Star scene is so stupid. It is ridiculously stupid. For one, it's just Kylo running after Rey and they're trying to have some tension. And honestly, the Raylo stuff, it doesn't, I don't care. I don't, I don't, I don't care about anything in this film. Uh, and, and again, I can't even get, I was angry after The Last Jedi. I am pretty apathetic about this it's i i'm kind of marveling on on how dumb it was uh and how like on the nose that it's uh i again the leaks are better written than the film than the film uh a battle with the sandworm ensues nope there was no battle and our heroes uh, are backed up in the corner preparing to meet their fate when ray notices a detail well there's no battle she just notices the detail and heals the sandworm once they realize they are uh, correctly, uh, they first know that Kylo Ren has found them. Once they realize that the First Order would have already found the Falcon, making the plan of escape impossible. They don't even do that. They don't, they don't acknowledge the Falcon. They just take off in Uche's ship. They leave the Falcon behind and, you know, uh, they capture Chewie. You think Chewie's dead, but you don't really think Chewie's dead. Um, and maybe they did kill Chewie at one point and reshot, reshot it to have him live. Maybe, uh, cause we initially heard that Chewie was going to die. Um, it's, and when I do my detailed review, I will show you, uh, I will tell you, describe to you the scenes that were obviously reshot. There's one scene in the beginning where C3PO is saying goodbye to R2. And the way you would shoot that scene, I mean, I'm not a director, but you would just, you would have a at least a scene where you show them together. Maybe C-3PO putting his hand on R2's little round head and saying, goodbye, buddy. Uh, no, they shot it in the weirdest way. And you can tell that they, they CG'd C-3PO on the frame to have his head covered up. And I'll have to like get a screenshot of it or something. It's hard to explain, but you, it just looks noticeably like a reshoot, something they threw in at the last minute. And there's a bunch of that. Uh, I'm sure even the rookie critic, you're an, you've edited stuff. You can un- identify. I, yeah, it's easy to identify bad edits. I'm sure even the layman can do it. So uh, while Kylo and Ray are engaged, um, literally they they are engaged in trying to bring down the uh, the transport. Uh, the Knights of Ren and the First Order head uh, over to Uche's ship. Uh, it, they just look at it. They don't do anything. Chewbacca splits off from the crew and attempts to delay the Knights. No. That does not happen. So what happens now is they just sent Chewbacca to go get Ray, who went to go face Kylo. She just took off on him while they, so they were in the process of trying to get the hell off the planet. And Ray goes, I'm going to go meet Kylo. So they sent Chewie out after, and that's how he gets caught. Uh, it's, it's dumb. 
Like I said, it's dumb. Uh, the heroes of the Resistance's Zach II are on their way to a snow-dusted planet of Kajimi to execute their plan to discover whose secrets uh, the dagger are held. Uh, the Resistance team arrives on a planet and bump into Zori Bliss and her crew. She reveals that the uh, Poe has a colorful past. Uh, so when you hear something described like that, you think there's like some something rich behind that. Like he's going to run into Zori Bliss and she said, well, we used to run in the past and uh, he's a spice runner and we got caught in, uh, you know, in the spice mines of Kessel and we had to, you know, no, they just said he used to be a spice runner. That's it. That's it. That was, that was it. That's his big colorful past. Um, that's Jar Jar Abrams. He feels like one sentence is enough to explain things. You know, kind of like how Ray survived on Jakku her entire life. R uh, Jar Jar's explanation, she survived. She's got to be tough because she survived. Well, how did she survive? She survived. I don't have to tell you how she survived. She just sur survived. So that means she's tough. No, you have to tell me how she survived. No, I don't. I'm Jar Jar Abrams. Mystery box. It's a mystery box. Goddamn mystery box. Goddamn mystery. Okay. Uh, Deuce Pigeon. Uh, for $1.99. Careful. Deborah Chow has never written and show run. Um, I don't need to be careful. She does. Uh, but thank you for the $1.99. Uh, you know, um, she has directed television, though. Uh, and nobody needs her to run anything. She just needs to direct. I don't think she should be in charge of Star Wars. Um, it looks like it's going to be Michelle Rijuan and then creatively, hopefully, it's uh, John Favreau and Dave Filoni uh, and Deborah Chow. And Deborah Chow. Uh, da -da -da -da. Somebody's got to start somewhere. Uh, Michael Chabon tried it. Didn't didn't work out so well for him. He's already off of uh, Star Trek Picard. But thank you for the $1.99. Uh, and, but so far I'm, I'm Deborah Chow has done two hours, uh, of good star Wars, which is more than Rianne Johnson and Jar Jar Abrams have done combined. Uh, now she was probably overseen by, uh, some actual talented people. She probably had a lot of help, uh, including John Favreau, who's, you know, he's not good all the time, but he's, he's good most of the time. So they hack three PO again. That's, it's just like, God, I'm trying to find anything that had any kind of emotion? Not really. So it's an episode of Alias. They chase down the Wayfinder and then they have to find Uche's blade to decipher this language. And you know what? Now that I think about it, they didn't even need the blade because um, they are on the planet Kajimi and that's where they were getting the blade transcribed and then kylo ren uh through the force connection he keeps figuring out where ray is so his his star destroyer shows up and ray could sense chewbacca on the star destroyer so they go up to get chewbacca while ray come while kylo comes down to the planet ray was just on so kylo can't sense where ray is but ray can sense chewbacca but she can't sense where kylo is then they have a force bond and Ray is in Kylo's apartment, basically, with um, with uh, the Vader helmet, and he doesn't know that. And they're sitting there having, and, and they have a they have a lightsaber duel in their Force Skype session. And I'm not kidding, they have a lightsaber duel in their Force Skype se session. And then that's when this happens. Again, there is no more accurate poster for a film than this, uh, completely destroying. Uh, Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, Luke Skywalker, and, and, oh, and they have what this lightsaber duel, which Ray kind of wins. And then she has to go to the Death Star later to find the other wayfinder. So there's two wayfinders out there and there's a Sith blade, but they only really needed to get one wayfinder. So two of the two of the little missions are completely meaningless if you actually think about them. They don't need to happen at all. And so so Rey and Kylo have that their fourth lightsaber duel and of course Rey defeats him and that's because he gets distracted by his mom. So apparently Leia was just waiting for the right time to contact uh, Ben uh, and call him Ben and then die. 
and Ray feels it, and Ben feels it, and I believe Palpatine feels it. I don't remember that part, though. I did run out to go pee, but that was during... uh, But I didn't miss anything, because that's where they were breaking Chewbacca out, and there was this big, long scene uh, that was a video game. It was Poe and Finn just shooting stormtroopers for, like, two minutes, and nothing really happened. Not that anything happened in the movie. But she kills Ben. She brings Ben... Uh, uh, Kylo back to life and and he's been and there is a Han Solo scene so there's a big long scene it's not repurposed footage it's Harrison Ford again his hair is longer and I have to say Harrison Ford's performance in this little scene was more Han Solo than his entire performance in The Force Awakens uh, it, it was and uh, it wasn't a good scene though it was a it was a reminder of what they did to one of my favorite characters of all time, just to please freaking Harrison Ford, just to and to get rid of a white male character because that's what they wanted to do. I did report quite some time ago from one of my insiders that one of the things that uh, that Jar Jar Abrams and Rian Johnson were told to do was to get rid of the old characters. Now they were going to always save Leia for last. Um, and, but what they did to her ended up being absolutely shameful. And you hear people in the access media who like this film and they're like, Oh my God, Carrie Fisher. Oh my God. Just Carrie. It's like, no, it was embarrassing and it was shameful, but, uh, it was, it was great seeing Harrison Ford one more time. And then when I thought about it for two seconds, it pissed me off. It completely pissed me off. And that's, that was the worst part. And now Kylo is redeemable because all he did was kill his dad. So, ah, you know, whatever. Uh, but the whole reason they brought back Palpatine for Ray to kill later was Cal- uh, Pal- they didn't even do the identity politics right, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, Palpatine being the ultimate form of evil colonialism and patriarchy, they didn't even pull that one off right. I don't know if they dialed it down or uh, I don't know. But when we when we get to the end, it's the most ridiculous thing ever. So. They're on this planet called Exegol, and it's behind a nebula or something. They don't really explain. It's something big and red that they have to fly through because, of course, Jar Jar Abrams has to have red something, some, you know, red matter, the Rimbaldi device. So they get to the planet Exegol, and the building that Palpatine looks like a giant uh, sand barge, right? Looks like a giant Jawa sand barge, whatever, floating off the ground. And there is a giant arena with, I mean, what, 50,000 hooded figures in the audience chanting some weird Sith thing. Uh, Where did they come from? Who are they? Why are they there? Why is there 50,000 people rooting on Palpatine? Did they know Ray was going to show up? Did he sell tickets to this event? Was this a religious event? Was this some kind of Sith sacrifice or something they say sacrifice in it but i mean they do not explain where this fifty thousand hooded people came from who were i mean who knew how to chant at the same time um palpatine's been busy apparently he's been trapped in this chair the whole time uh so he's kind of a corpse and again he's just missing a few fingers so Ray decides to show up there because Palpatine has been calling. She finds out she, you know, Palpatine is grandpa. Uh, the her parents died trying to save her. You don't, fe- you don't know which parent was related to Palpatine. You don't know if it's, uh, if it's, uh, if it was his son or his daughter who betrayed him. They don't bother to explain uh, at all. They they explain nothing. They don't explain where Ray gets her extra force powers. They don't really explain her training. They don't explain how Palpatine came back. They don't explain how Be- uh, Kylo Ren can have a conversation with Han Solo who's not a force ghost. Was it imagination? I don't know. They don't explain how they can pass solid objects through the force. And I am just hitting the tip of the iceberg. They don't explain how they got thousands of Star Destroyers. Who mans these thousands of Star Destroyers? I did the math, by the way, on the 100 that they showed in the trailer, that one scene. It's like, it's, it's well over a million people. They briefly said we have to harvest more children. So you kidnap children. Okay, they have to grow up. It takes time. So you have one generation, basically, that you got. Um, the Sith Troopers are nothing. Um 
the space horses are they're not in space when they're fighting the uh, when the space horses come out but they're in the upper atmosphere which maybe Exocol doesn't have a thing called wind, but when you go in the upper atmosphere, the winds are like a hundred miles an hour, you know, stuff like that. Now they're like, uh, Naomi Aki is in her like tank top up there. I mean, it's, it's dumb. It's just dumb. It's, it's, it's almost too dumb to review. It's too dumb to review. So the Palpatine, everything is leading up to this little meeting with Palpatine. And if you watch this film, you will forget three quarters of it three quarters of the way through things happen too fast. Nothing lands. You can't remember. I mean, like, I don't know how anybody can remember anything that happens in this film. Just make sure you have the leaks, uh, with you if you want to review it. And we get to the end, we get to the end. So he wants to give his throne to his granddaughter. Kylo Ren has been redeemed. He makes his way back. They fight him together. And there is no big fight, by the way, there is no big fight at the end. They just a uh, little, little uh, monologuing and then he fires some lightning at, Re- okay, first he takes Kylo and throws him over a cliff and, th- and he is the final Skywalker. And then he, uh, sh- then Ray gets her, both of her lightsabers. So there's that one, that one spoiler shot where Kylo and Ray are holding their lightsabers that, that happened. Uh, then they get rid of Ray and Ray gets two lightsabers and, uh, it's, it's explained better than it happens in the film here. So if we get to air, let me get that picture off. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, I was initially told that, uh, the preceding sentences, but it coincided with the change up in the film. Uh, I got to get to the end here. Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Um, oh, the battle at the end is like a mishmash of nothing. So. Ben kills the Knights of Ren. Uh, this is the only semi-decent fight, and it, and I mean semi-decent. I'll just say it's semi-competent. I won't call it decent. So Ben fights the Knights of Ren. The Knights of Ren are about as meaningful as Dengar was, and I don't mean to ri- you know disrespect Dengar, but listen, the bounty hunters in the Empire Strikes Back were brilliant to me when I was 11, but they didn't do anything. They just stood there. Um, the Knights of Ren did nothing but get killed by Ben. They, they just existed to get killed by Ben. How the, how do they get killed by Ben? Ray passes Ben a lightsaber through the Force. Ben killing the Knights of Ren only with the Force has apparently been changed, and it's being told to me now he initially gets beat up by the Knights of Ren without a weapon, and then Ray gives him a lightsaber. As Ray is about to kill Palpatine, uh, it's, again, Palpatine wants to die. He's been waiting all this time, building all these ships. He's going to start a brand new, it's called the final order. Uh, and I'm sure the next one will be the really final order. Uh, and he's just, he wants to die. So Palpatine survived to die. Tell me how that makes sense, but it does in Jar Jar Abrams world. Uh, a selfish Sith is now being selfless for a granddaughter. He never knew. He obviously didn't care about his kids. Uh, we don't know uh, who, who's grandma, who, who, who got busy with Palpatine. Um, but you know what? We did get one question a- answered. One question has been answered. Now we know how Shmi Skywalker got knocked up. Palpatine sent some of his semen through the force and knocked her up that way. And no, they didn't mention that, uh, you know, because it was supposed to be Palpatine who impregnated uh, Shmi Skywalker. Now, that happened in the comics. Uh, I guess the comics are canon, or maybe J.J. just doesn't care. Uh, As Rey is about to kill Palpatine, as she sees no way around this, um, so the the thing she sees no way around is Palpatine says, I'm going to kill all your friends unless you become queen. so I'm going to kill all your friends unless you kill me. That was that was it. That was it. There's no context, nothing. I'm going to kill all your friends unless you kill me. She senses Ben at the last moment. She realizes she's not alone and initiates a force bond and passes off one of the lightsabers to him. Ray apparently takes out the guards with Leia's saber while Ben uses Anakin's to dispatch the Knights of Ren. They reconvene to face Palpatine together. Seeing Ben arrive, 
pleases Sidious. Palpatine then uses power to bond them together and begins to siphon power. So this is where he brings up the dyad. So after he said, I want you to kill me and take my throne, they get together and he's all, oh no. And he sucks the power off and then his fingers grow back and he gets a wardrobe change. And I'm not kidding, he gets, he gets a wardrobe change. Um, and then he decides, screw this, I, I'm going to take it for myself now. Uh, Palpatine stands tall, restoring himself to a much younger, healthier state. Uh, my source tells me, uh, that it looks clear that Sidious's plan, uh, was for Ray to kill him, take over and carry out his legacy, but sucking the life out of them and rejuvenating himself is his contingency plan. And that was the truth. That was the truth. So Ben gets knocked over the cliff. There's a brief fight between Ray and the emperor and... Uh, Ray wins, of course, but then the a- arena falls down. She dies. Ben uh, Ben Swolo comes up, gives her a kiss, rejuvenates her, dies. Everybody ODs on the force. He fades, by the way. So he fades, and then Leia's body doesn't fade until he fades. So they have Leia's body with a blanket over it on the camp for like days. So that fades. But when Ray died, she didn't fade. So why didn't she fade when she died? Uh, maybe because she's not a Jedi. And she's still not a Jedi. So then there's a celebration. By the way, um, the, 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 uh, the Resistance wins because this time when they, you know, remember in The Last Jedi, they put a call out for help and nobody came? Well, this time everybody came uh, because Lando got him to come. And that was it. And that's all. They celebrate at the end. Uh, There's a lesbian kiss. So the world is now a better place because there was a lesbian kiss in Star Wars. Um, Children are now no longer hungry in Africa and everybody has a job and everybody is going to get a horsey at Christmas because lesbians kissed in Star Wars. The world is healed. Um, And uh, then Ray goes to Tatooine for why I don't know. Uh, because Luke himself hadn't been there for a long time. And that was a great representation of what Disney Star Wars is. We just needed to have some interconnected, crappy series of events to get us our imagery. So we can sell it, put it on a shirt, make a Star Wars widget out of it. And all you did was sacrifice Anakin and Luke's story forever. Now that I've seen it, it does damage the original trilogy for me. I don't care about Star Wars anymore. I'm not a fan of Star Wars anymore. And if I never, I mean, I'm going to do a video review on this. And if I never, ever talk about this movie again, I will be completely happy. I'm right where I was after The Last Jedi. I am ready myself to turn the page on this shite because it looked like they were just going through the motions it looks like uh, the Mandalorian is what we're going to get, but honestly, it's it's a it's a really good side quest. But the main story has been completely crapped on. Uh, yeah. After the celebration, Ray goes to live by herself, and she gets BB-8 for some reason. I thought that was Pose Droid, but who cares? Who gives a shit, right? Whoo. Um, I I don't ever want to see it again. I might have to for my review, but I really don't want to see it again. Where's the window capture? Well, there you guys are. Hi. Hi, everybody. I got to get some super chats now. It's late. It is late. Um, We're going to do a couple super chats. uh, And if you guys have any questions in the regular chat, just hit at Nerdrotic. I'll try to to answer it. Um, So... I guess the question I have for you guys is uh, what do you think was the motivation behind Jedi Paxis's leaks? Was it a disgruntled employee, uh, a provocateur, an agent of chaos, or was it George Lucas? <laughs> Cause I think it's George Lucas. I'm so convinced now. Uh, Deus pigeon. Thank you for the dollar 99. I appreciate you. Uh, always looking out for me. Crucible media TV for $5. Who the hell was the emperor's wife, right? Uh, who did he marry and have kids with? When? When? What the F is going on here? I don't know. I was asking. I was starting to ask these questions, Crucible Media TV, and then I realized, well, why do I care if Jar Jar Abrams and Disney don't care? By the way, Bob Iger, you signed on, off on this shite. 
So did Kathleen Kennedy. How anybody has a job after destroying the biggest franchise of all time, uh, you tell me. You tell me how that even effing works. How does anybody keep their job? All right, let's get it. Game of Thrones Season 8 or Rise of Skywalker? Ask Jordan Bodine. What's worse? Hmm. Game of Thrones Season 8 or Rise of Skywalker? Rise of Skywalker is... Is worse because the Star Wars it's it's a bigger it's a bigger fandom. Um, Game of Thrones season eight was worse to me because I was a bigger fan of A Song of Ice and Fire than I was Star Wars when it happened. But uh, they're both equally uh, two of the biggest. Actually, you know what? The biggest uh, film disaster and the biggest television disaster happened in the same year. They did. But I would give the edge to the Rise of Skywalker because what it stamps out. Um, at least with Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire, the, the the books are the the original source material. They are still there. They are in the hands of their original creator. And if he ever decides to finish the fucking book, then we'll probably get a decent story. Don't think that's going to happen, though. Rise of Skywalker is worse. Good question. 64 Nerd. Um, you forgot Chewie's Metal. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of little stuff like that. But, yes, Chewie's medal at the end. Um, he gets that from, oh, I'm blanking on her name, Maz Kanata. Which was, but Leia was holding it earlier, so it's her medal. Remember, Han sold his, or sold Luke's for drinking money. Oh, by the way, uh, Luke and Han, or no, uh, Luke and Leia both knew that Palpatine was raised, uh, granddad and they just decided to keep it from her she didn't even get mad it was just done and said uh and they really did in some areas copy return of the jedi beat for beat in just how the scenes looked not the story but how the scenes looked uh again the only the only good out of this is john williams is really good at his job it is so sad that he went out like this and listen you can't go home again so I will say this again. If there is there is a future George Lucas out there, like I, I don't think there'll ever be anything as big as Star Wars, but there'll be a franchise. You know, maybe one of those guys doing independent comics right now. Some big company is going to want to buy your IP. Don't sell your control. Don't ever, ever, ever sell your control. Um, and yeah, just don't. Stay. I mean, make sure your heirs are control of it. And you know what? Give up a few million bucks. You'll probably still get enough money to live off of. Uh, but let's get to a couple super chats here. Wow, over seven thousand people watching this late at night. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. Um, James Glass for two dollars. Fan Metacritic versus Rotten Tomatoes score are different. Uh, I think the Rotten Tomatoes audience score was eighty-eight percent. Uh, that's insanely high. Uh, but I can see the normies liking this movie more than the Last Jedi. I I maintain what I said in my last uh, uploaded video, which was the forty-three percent audience score for the Last Jedi is one hundred percent accurate. But yeah, we're gonna see how this plays out, James. Uh, but I did know uh, Adam Child told me that uh, at the meetup today. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. I, I can see normies like liking this movie in the way they liked, uh, you know, the Transformers first night. Is that what it was called? Uh, yeah. Voices, voice of movies for four ninety nine. Pretty convenient. They sank in the quicksand to find Uchi's ship, right? Or the little quick rocks or bb's or whatever very convenient and and uchi just happened to die right there with the blade uh it's just amazing and lando and luke had been looking for that for 30 years but ray found it in 30 seconds clan razor for two dollars the expanse crew looks strung out on a good one the the expanse crew looks strung out on a good one. they might have been they might have been partying uh, clan, but watch The Expanse. The Expanse is better than Star Wars. It's better than Star Trek. It's the best show on TV. Uh, that in the Orville. Jay Bird the third for five dollars. Thank you for watching this train wreck of a movie, so we don't have to. Mister H said it's the best. Uh, it said it best in his review. If you like this film, I don't like you. <laughs> um. Um. 
I just won't trust your taste. Uh, I won't hold it against you. Um, but yeah, if you support what Disney Star Wars is about, if you support attacking fans, then, you know, I won't have time for you. I'll put it that way. So how's that? If you like this film, I don't have time. I don't have time for you. Uh, Yod Vav, Yod Vav for $2. F Disney. That's right. F Disney. Uh, Duck Fizney, Duck Fizney, J Boogie for twenty dollars. What's up, J Boogie? Uh, you know I'm a fan of JJ, but this movie was very bad. So much wrong. I'm not sure if it was his decision or Disney's to stuff so much plot into one movie, but it was terrible. They put Ray with an abuser, not Finn. Why? For the racist, right? Um. They brought in a new character for Finn to connect with. She was an ex-Stormtrooper as well. And she was a Disney... This was a Disney Star Wars movie. This was this played like a a, a Disney Plus. And I don't mean like a... Like a, a I don't know. Like, a, like one of the cartoon channels. That's what it played out like. Amy uh, Aki's character was terrible. And... Uh, poor Rose Tico was, uh, uh, Ethan's probably upset. She was, yeah, all she did was add a boy, go get him. All right. Uh, and it, it just proves that, um, they don't believe in your causes or they don't, they just think it'll make them some money. And once they don't have time for your causes anymore, they're going to leave them behind. And you can, you can already see that. Uh, because they realized that those causes were alienating a lot of people. So rightfully so, get away from that stuff. But the problem is damage is done. So, you know, Jar Jar Abrams recently came out and said, hey, can't we just all like Star Wars and be cool now? Oh, so you want to F everything up, kill Han, kill Luke, disrespect the fans, uh, and you served Luke up so you can make Rey great. Uh, people waited decades to see Luke, you know, just, you know what? We deserve to see Luke OP, like bringing down a Star Destroyer or something like that. Uh, the fans deserve that. And then you bring in Roundhead to subvert their expectations, which is bullshit. You told him to get rid of Luke and treat him that way. That was something, that was an order that came from on high. So to answer your question earlier, from earlier, that order came from on high. And now you want to be cool. It's like, oh, I, I saw articles. Well, you might not like the movie, but you don't need to be a jerk about it. Oh, really? And then we have the access media out there accusing the fans of uh, causing this problem. That Disney was trying to, uh, to placate us with fan service. That wasn't fan service. And by the way, I don't know what the access media is whinging about. You guys got everything you wanted. You got everything you wanted. As far as the destruction of the original Star Wars, they won. That We didn't win. We got them to change their ways after the damage was done. We won a battle, but we lost the war. We did. We just, we just, what we did, what we did win was, the, we the Phantom Menace was, don't ever effing do that again. Um, you cross the fans, you lose every time. You lose every time. And what Disney Star Wars is now is something with an expiration date on it. I don't think it will be very prevalent in 10 years. Even if The Mandalorian becomes the greatest show of all time. No show lasts 10 years. Um, and what? It did get a season three. And who's to say Obi-Wan's going to be good? And who cares about Obi-Wan now? It's, I mean, awesome. Deborah Chow's going to take over the show, but I'm I'm a lot less interested in the character because Obi-Wan was Luke's mentor and Luke was just a stepping stone for Ray. Ray Palpatine. By the way, Palpatine victorious. He won. I mean, that was... I don't know how you... J.J. must have writ, wrote that on the toilet. Chris Terrio who wrote Batman versus Superman as a co-writer on this. And Colin Trevorrow uh, donated his money to kids hospice. Hail Colin Trevorrow. If you're out there listening for some reason, you got my respect. That's a way of taking your name off the film without embarrassing them. Cause you could ask him to do that. Uh, Y'all know who Alan Smithy is a thousand Alan Smithies live in Jar Jar Abrams. Thank you. Uh, Jay Boogie. It's good to see you, man. 
Uh, Ace Christ for four ninety nine. That cements it. The trilogy is a complete failure. Tragic. The mini Vito Corleone messing with three PO's head made me laugh until they did it over. Uh, yeah, they did it twice. Uh, the little, the little, uh, yeah, the little Italian uh, Bulio or whatever his name is. It was kind of funny. Uh, the the little hair dryer droid is stupid. Uh, socks with sandals for 10 pounds. Here's the tenor I would have wasted on that stupid movie. I appreciate you socks with sandals, even if you wear socks with sandals. Uh, we'll have to talk about that. But if it's just your name, no. Thank you, man. Uh, cheers. Uh, love the UK. I'm going to be there in not too long. A few months, I'll be over there. Uh, I love the tree. Um, do you like Rush? Uh, the song trees. I love that song, by the way, five pounds. Great review. Where do you think star Wars? Uh, thank you, by the way. I appreciate that. Where do you think star Wars should go next? Um, in the storage forever. Uh, who would you want to do a trilogy and what and when, um, uh, the honest answer to that question is I don't care. I'm not going to watch it. I'm, I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to review it. Um, I'm pretty done with star Wars. I, I, I like Luke Skywalker. I grew up with Luke Skywalker. Now star Wars can be a lot of things to a lot of people. There's a bunch of prequel fans, but guess what? The prequel fans were dis just as disrespected in this film as the Luke fans. Um, Oh, look, they gave you Ahsoka's voice. Wow. Big deal. Who cares? Um, I, I would uh, give it to, honestly, uh, what I said in my Mandalorian review to answer your question. Uh, thank you for the five pounds. I love the tree. I would give it to John Favreau, Dave Filoni, Deborah Chow. Uh, that last episode of The Mandalorian is how you do Star Wars. Uh, yad yab for $2. Uh, thanks for your honesty. Uh, and thank you for your support. I appreciate you. Um, I'll try to remain as honest as possible. Hail Gary, you took one for the fandom. You truly did a man's job, sir. I wish I could feel any emotions towards this train wreck, but there are all, they are all gone like the, like tears in the rain. Thank you for the review. Thank you, RR, for the nine ninety nine. And honestly, yeah, I, um, I don't have any emotions right now. I might sound worked up, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to sleep like a baby. I just. It, it, this thing, uh, yeah, reviewing this thing, it, it's a dead horse. I mean, honestly, the third of the Disney trilogy was Palpatine of this story. It was just a reanimated corpse that was cartoonish and it just needed to be put down. And thankfully this will be put down. Um, <clears throat> it'll probably do well this weekend. Uh, uh, listen, in San Francisco, but this was like the first show. So I got to keep in mind that this was the first show, 6 p.m. So the hardcore, the hardcore fans are going to go. I was in a family area of San Francisco, which there aren't many. Trust me. not a, We're called breeders here. Uh, if you have kids, you're called a breeder. Uh, so I got to keep that in mind. Half the audience clapped. It might do well. I don't know. It's hard for me to judge. I do know that 25% of that theater, which was sold out, was empty. I don't know how it's going to do, though. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, uh, nano, nano reaper for $2. The best thing about rise of Skywalker was Kelly Marie, uh, trans dress for the opening. Yes. She is a beautiful young lady who I'm sure she's just as smart too. I wish her all the best. Uh, no, you know what? I've never seen anybody in my chat ever s come close to saying something bad about her ever. Nobody's ever said anything. They, they just... I think people didn't like the character. Nobody's got a problem with her. So that might have been trumped up a little bit. Uh, little Poet Boy has become a member at the Jooloja level. Um, I am honored, Little Poet Boy. Thank you for joining. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, we will get some member stuff this weekend. Rusty for Australian $2. Ray ended up killing Palps. Why didn't he possess her? That's a good question. Uh, the reason he didn't possess her was Jar Jar didn't have time to think about it because he had to write a script on the fly and he had to rewrite it a hundred times because he was reshooting 75% of this film. I am now convinced, by the way, 100% convinced, 75% of this film was reshot. Hail my friend Doomcock. By the way, tune in 6 p.m. Sunday night on his channel. We will talk about this. And also tomorrow, 
Uh, it's going to be a fun show. We got uh, Quarter Black Garrett from the Steven Crowder Show. We got Comics Division Odin, G uh, Jeremy, uh, and uh, somebody else, I don't know, for Friday Night Tights tomorrow at 5 p.m. Again, my video will not be out till Saturday because I'm going to try to put some work into it. Uh, Chris Evans for five dollars is it the Chris Evans? Uh, good job of Captain America, but you're a bit of a I don't know about the, the real life stuff. Uh, you obviously got the dark side ending of the Rise of Skywalker. Go play it again for the light side ending. <laughs> have you seen the Star Wars multiverse theory? Uh, yes, I have, and you might be right, Chris. So uh, you remember that clip? Thank you, Chris, for the five dollars. That was good. Um, you remember that clip with Darth Vader in it? Where Kylo sees Darth Vader? Yeah, they took that out of the movie. It's not in the movie. Uh, Grant Kelbrick for 35 Zardozes. Uh, it's a monetary... It's, it's, I call it a Zardoz. It's a Z-A-R. Uh, think I cracked it. Palpatine had an affair with Grand Moff Tarkin's wife and out popped Ray. Solved. Eh, yeah. Well, Grand Moff Tarkin's wife was just a beard anyway. You know. Because he was having an affair with... Uh, Admiral Piet, right? Admiral Piet and Grand Moff Tarkin, Tarkin were uh, getting it on in the broom closet uh, uh, in the Death Star. Uh, Mandanara for 10 PLNs. Uh, you think modern studios capable of original thought? No. There's a simple answer to that. No. Patriot for five pounds, uh, but thank you for the, for the 10 PLNs. I appreciate it. Patriot for five pounds. I was a last Jedi hater. It showed us the right way by killing the past to begin a new era. It was, uh, I was, and then a, uh, explanation point, a TLJ hater. It showed us the right way by killing the past to begin a new era. It was necessary. It was necessarily. Now we have the rise of Skywalker that killed everything. Yep. So the last Jedi, well, the, uh, the Rise of Skywalker was peeing on the dead body. Is that a, that's not a very nice way to put it, but that's the way it was. Um, peeing on the corpse. Uh, Roared Gaming for Canadian $2. What's your opinion on Rogue One? Uh, it's, it's an okay movie. It's probably the best Disney Star Wars movie. Uh, I haven't rewatched it, but uh, it's okay. Uh, that ending is, I mean, the Darth Vader thing, that's dope. That's great. Uh, buy original, tr uh, quite gone for 100 yen. Uh, buy original trilogy and prequels in the Clone Wars on Blu-ray. Maybe add Rogue, Rogue One. Forget the rest. It's not canon. Disney better clean up their act with the MCU. Uh, I think the MCU is coming, uh, I think it's coming to an end as we know it, unfortunately. I think the MCU is coming to an end as we know it. I, I hope I'm wrong. But Kevin Feige might be coming over to, to work on Star Wars. So we'll see. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. JP Gotro Kits for $10. Uh, if I mess up these names, I'm sorry. Uh, it's late. Uh, Green Lantern sold to Disney. What? GL sold to, or George Lucas sold to Disney. So that would be, I see GL, I think Green Lantern. Uh, so that would be preserved for the future generations. They failed on so many levels. They killed it. It is too topical and not timeless as the OT was. Yes. Uh, the worst word that can be related to Star Wars is relevance. That is some bull. Tell me how, the only thing relevant in Star Wars was feathered hair. That was it. And that's because everybody had feathered hair in 1977, including yours truly. Yes, I had feathered hair. Uh, no one important for $2. Do it. Do it. He does it. He does a do it. He does a do it. That happens. Uh, Nigel Mayo for five pounds. I couldn't even masturbate to this end. God knows I tried. <laughs> Oh, I think Jar Jar did though. Well, thank you know what? Thanks for trying. Thanks for trying. Uh, for five pounds, <laughs> Zach Gilbert for two dollars. Originals greater than prequels. Prequels great greater than dog uh, dog shite. Uh, greater than Rise of Soywalker. So originals greater than prequels. Yes, prequels are greater than dog shite, and dog shite is greater than the Rise of Skywalker. Uh, uh, Soywalker. Zach, you are correct. 
Thank you very much. Uh, without a doubt. By the way, uh, if you could hit that like button, I would greatly appreciate it. We are at uh, 1.7 thousand likes. That's great. That is fantastic. I appreciate you all here, uh, all being here so damn late. Uh, and wow, I am honored, honored by your presence. Catherine Greer from Modesto for $2. The Witcher is out. Oh, it is. I'll watch the first episode before I go to bed. Uh, I will be reviewing that this weekend. So I'll, I'll probably the first part of it, I'll review The Witcher. Uh, I hope it's good. I hope it's not woke. If it's woke, I'll tell you. Catherine, good to see you. It's a trap productions for $2. I think my first super chat got skipped. Um, I will go back and get it, okay? Uh, I, give me just a second. It, it probably jumped on me, but I'm sorry you had to put that in again. But I always check before I go. Uh, and if I, for any reason, miss it, it's a trap. I'll make up for it Friday night, okay? Uh, but I'll, I'll check in a second, all right? Thank you. Sorry. Cypress Collectibles Incorporated for $9.99. The Dead Speak Emperor, dead, still alive. Chewy killed, still alive. Kylo off cliff, still alive. Kylo, fatal saber wound, still alive. Han Solo died, still walking around. Ray dies, still alive. What the? F Cypress, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um... No, it there was no stakes. It was meaningless. It was boring. It was, it was boring. I was uh, if I had a watch, I'd be looking at it. Uh, oh yeah, there's a bunch. Oh my lordy, Jesus Christ! There is absolutely yeah. It jumped on me. Uh, it's it's a trap productions. Holy Christ! Um, it really jumped on me. Oh my God! Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! Okay. We're going to have to go back here. Uh, MacGuffin, my theater was dead quiet. Miami forced out. Okay. Crucible, I did those. Sorry, folks. Give me just a moment. Uh, Nano Raper J Boogie. Okay. Uh, Kaz Walker, welcome to the Gandalf level. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, Drake is six for $2. Hmm. Bad alias on LSD. It will sweep the Razzies. It will. It will. Uh, only Tards edit this trash, says Yod Vod for $2. Thank you very much. Uh, Jay Boogie for $5. You and Doomcock were right about this one, but they may get away with it because it seems like people are loving it, even on RT. Uh, this is a head scratcher. Um, yeah, people loved uh, Terminator Dark Fate and it didn't do well. Uh, this is not a good movie. I feel very confident that... Um, uh, my taste is going to hold up on this one. If people are loving it, uh, it's because of the member berries and Disney can sell a lot of things to a lot of people. That's why they were selling the end of the Skywalker saga. Cause they had nothing. You may be right. Jay boogie. Um, I remember after the force awakens, I thought I was going crazy that people liked it, but Jar Jar Abrams knows how to get the normies. Uh, yeah, he knows how to get the normies, but you are right. Thank you. Thank you. MacGuffin, uh, meant spine, not spy. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, it's late. It's late for both of us. 80% of the audience is tarted, says Yodvod for $2. Um, uh, but not this chat, but the, in my theater, yes. The ones who clapped, yes. Rock Flanagan for $2. You're not my mom. Don't tell me to go to bed. Okay, I won't. You're right, Rock Flanagan. I'm not. Eric K., you're a sadist for seeing it again, dear Lord. Uh, I am. I am. But I kind of like that stuff. Uh, Grant Kelbrick for 70 Zardozes. Hail, Gary. So happy to make a live chat. It's been a while. Extremely glad you made it through this abomination. Thank you very much. Uh, that is the Rise of Skywalker. You made it, buddy. We made it. We made it. Uh Zedrock Zedraco for RSD or 100 RSDs. Gary, did you get any free popcorn? Some solace? No, I got snacks. I paid for them. Uh, no, no, nothing free. But I got to hang out with you guys tonight, so that's great. And it's 12:33. Get it together now for two dollars. I feel your pain. Check your email. I will. I will. Mikhail Wolf for five New Zealand dollars. My popcorn money. Since I am not going to this movie. I am glad you're not. Uh, time is valuable. It's the one thing you cannot get back. You cannot get time. Money you can get back. Time is gone forever. 
Uh, and thank you. Uh, Drake is six for two dollars. Drunk three PO was angry. Mary Mayhem teared up. Teared up. Uh, fuck JJ. Really? Who teared up? So drunk three PO was angry at Mary Mayhem. How could he get married? Ah, uh, they're probably just. Uh, I don't think they're real. Uh, really? I'm gonna have to watch. Well, I'm gonna catch up on everybody's live streams tomorrow. So. Uh, Grandmaster B for 20 pounds. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Uh, Dorby for $2. Ray should have healed Luke's hand on the last Jedi. She should have, she could have gone through one of the plot wormholes and healed his hand. I think that could have happened. Um, just to let you guys know, I am on a time limit tonight, so I am going to try to get through these, but I don't want to disrespect the super chat. So if I don't get through everything, I will do a makeup show um, probably tomorrow, probably tomorrow morning uh, after I get some sleep. Uh, but I will do it on this channel. Uh, just to let you guys know, most I'll probably leave this live stream up, but most live streams go to Nerdrotic Live, my alternate channel. If you go to my main page, look to the right, you see Nerdrotic Live. That's where I put all my live streams when they're done. This one I'm probably going to keep up. Uh, Ruben Velasquez for $5. Thank you for the cute little Cobra Kai Fox. I appreciate it. Fans pay the bills. It blows my mind that they attack the fan base. Thank you for your reviews. Really enjoy them. Uh, Saldrin TJ for $5. I appreciate, uh, you, your support. Thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you. We had over 7,000 people. I think people are dip, dipping out now and I don't blame them, but, uh, that was amazing. All right. So, uh, and, and I'll keep the reviews coming. I got a lot of stuff to review. Uh, but listen, the attacking the fans part is still going on. Uh, again, that's the narrative that the access media is trying to craft out there and there will be other opportunities to attack fans and we will be here every single time. Uh, I, I, this really needs to stop. And I don't know, honestly, I mean, other than pointing it out every time, I don't know how else we stop it. Then we just, the minute somebody attacks a fan, you got to stop the support dead right there. And it sucks. It's hard. We're talking about things we love, things we love for a long time, but they're learning at Marvel comics, uh, what it's like to attack the fans. And now, you know, they can't pay their rent. Uh, when, when, when their $100 is due, you know, because they have eight roommates and they eat ramen, uh, every week, uh, they can't even afford that because they've attacked the fans and you lose every time, but everybody loses because these people double down and they end up ruining our franchise. Uh, thank you, Grandmaster B. Thank you, Dorby. Uh, Cameron Nance, uh, for $9.99. The Last Jedi was like watching, uh, a loved one take a fatal blow. It enrages us. The Rise of Skywalker is having to watch a loved one bleed to death, and we have to watch and can do nothing. It broke our hearts. Uh, you, nothing without the fans, by the way. Yes, Cameron, that is a... For nine ninety nine, thank you very much. That is a very eloquent way to put it. Um, two hundred watt studio, and thank you again. Um, the 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 rise of Skywalker was. I'm trying to put it to words. I got to sleep on it. Uh, again, I just just got out before I started this live stream. Uh, it, there was no, they had no soul. I mean, I'm not saying any of the other Disney Star Wars stuff though, but there was like zero soul. They, they tried a couple of emotional moments and they didn't land with me. So maybe I'm just a cold hearted bastard, but I didn't feel anything. Uh, Kylo's memory of his dad gave him uh, a bearded stubble. Yes. And grew his hair. You're right. 200 watt studio. Uh, Joshua Jendrick uh, for $10. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Jay Terry for $5. Deborah Chow is cool, but if Nerdrotic, EVS, and Jeremy were in control, I have a feeling that Star Wars would return to its greatness. Uh, Jay Terry, thank you. I am honored to be included in that list. Uh, I would hire... I would hire the... You know what? It, you don't have to be a Star Wars fan, but you have to understand science fiction and fantasy. Uh, there are people out there that uh, I think... Ex <laughs> I think John Favreau was a good choice. Um, I would get uh, Matthew Vaughn. I would tap Matthew Vaughn to do Star Wars. 
And I think that would be quite good. Uh, even now, I mean, he kind of messed up with the Hobbit, but I'd say Peter Jackson, but, uh, Peter, ja- what I would do is I would limit people. I would limit budgets. So I, I mean, JJ Abrams requires the biggest budget. He requires the most money and all his movies end up being expensive messes. And I hope this exposes him now. There is a bunch of Star Trek fans going, I told you so, I told you so, in the darkness. This is justice for in the darkness. And I'm one of those. So now I think it exposes, uh, listen, there's going to be normies who love it. Uh, hey, people loved Avatar. I am. I guess I'm in the minority. I didn't like Avatar, but people loved it. I can be wrong about stuff. I don't think I'm wrong about this one. This was not a good movie. I mean, listen, I cannot like it and admit it was good. Just go, hey, I don't like it. But it's a good movie. What can I say? No, this is not the case. It was a, it's horrible storytelling, horrible editing, uh, shaky cam, everything bad. Brian Yoder for $5. Star Wars Episode 10, Grand Moff Tarkin leads a fleet of 100,000 Starbase killers against Rey, who has forced resurrection Macy Windu uh, to be her Padawan. Yes. That's almost what happens, Brian. Uh, a little resistance feet, fleet beats beats 100 Star Destroyers armed with planet killer laser beams by knocking out their radar, basically. Yep. Knocking out their radar. And that's after Palpatine shoots... You know that scene where he shoots lightning in the sky? He actually like starts destroying spaceships. It's so goddamn stupid. <laughs> it's just terrible. Uh, but he doesn't, he only slightly damages them. He destroys some, but only slightly damages the important ones, you know, because of the script. JR for $1.99. At least we got two chicks making out, though. Yeah. Yeah. I would have, uh, it would, if it was like, like Ray and, and, uh, and Kelly Marie Tran, that would have been better. But, uh, uh, Svi Levetkin. Mazel tov, my friend. Happy Hanukkah. That's in a few days. Uh, let's get hashtag Doomcock was right trending. Uh, I hope people are doing that because he was. Because he was. Anti Trekker is seeing the movie now. Pray for him. Thomas Potts for $1.99. Oh, it sounds like he wants to like it. Uh, I sense, I sense Anti Trekker. Uh, I know what he's doing. Uh, he's got to talk to me. Thomas, tell Anti Trekker to talk to me. Uh, Darth Canicus. Now I love Annie Trekker for $5. Hell no. Carrie was a hero to many. She was an advocate for mental health. We all loved her. What a disgrace to Carrie's memory. Exactly. Um, Carrie was one of actually my heroes. Uh, Postcards from the Edge is a great book. Um, Carrie, uh, suffers from the same demons that I did. So I have gr- the greatest empathy and sympathy for her. And I know the battle she had on her hands and working in Hollywood. I can't imagine it. You know, that's why I tell like, you know, not that he's listening, but Ben Affleck should quit acting. If he wants to see his kids grow up, he should just get the hell out of Hollywood and quit acting. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's a trap productions. I just saw the movie. Thanks to our pal, Ryan Cannell. Hey, uh, Ryan Cannell is, 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 is a good guy. He's a good guy. Gary, I feel physically, mentally, and spiritually disgusted. I think I hate JJ Abrams now. Well, you know how I feel then. Um, yeah, I walked out of the theater bummed. Not like, not like I can't wait to rip this one a new asshole. I was just like, I- I'm not happy about this. I'm genuinely not happy. Uh, honestly, I would trade the clicks for better Star Wars. I, I can get clicks from other stuff. I, I can. I, I this sucks. It sucks, but it's it's been dead for a while. I don't know where Disney goes from here. I mean, again, there's a bunch of suckers out there who are going to continue buying this stuff. And all right, I, I wish I could go through life uh, like that. I really do. Uh, the trilogy is not canon. None of us will accept it. This is not Luke's legacy or future. Uh, Phoenix for four ninety nine. I'm with you there. I refuse to believe it, but Mark Hamill was in it. Oh, God. 
George Civil for five dollars. Uh, I think that we could have had a Thrawn trilogy, and we got this abomination instead. So disappointing. Yeah, just adapt freaking Timothy Zahn's books. Would that have been so hard? Uh, but I mean, the egos in Hollywood just don't let this shit happen, though. Uh, SF Giants Forty Nine er for two twenty nine. Thanks for watching for me. You make a good. You make a good work. Well, thank you. Uh, I do like what I do. I do like what I do. I like reviewing television. It's it's uh, it's a fun job, and the only reason I have it is because of you guys. So uh, I will never be able to express in words my gratitude for you all, finding you all, having uh, you all here to help me. It's like therapy. You help me through Game of Thrones. You help me through Doctor Who. You're helping me through Star Wars. So thank you. Uh, Joanne Wong for Australian $5. Who needs to watch the rise of Skywalker when we have this excellent YouTube content? Thank you, Gary. Why? Thank you. I appreciate it. And I can't wait to watch everybody else's stuff. I cannot wait. Jacob Huffcut for a dollar. I feel like I was the last cause I'm on the West coast. Cause I was, thank you for the dollar, Jacob. I appreciate your support. Jay bird. The third for $5. This movie is too much for any one person to handle. The Phantom Menace should divide it. Each of you unpacking all the badness in 20 minute section. That's a good, that's actually a, a, you know, maybe we'll do that on Friday Night Tights. I like that suggestion a lot. Uh, Jacob Huffcut for $2. This movie wasn't bad. It wasn't that bad. Cringy, angry nerd. Uh, the, the movie wasn't that bad. Cring, cringy, angry nerd. Um, Am I cringy? Uh, wow. Uh, the movie was that bad. Yes, uh, it was that bad. And the movie was cringy. Uh, but I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. But hey, thank you for the $2. Uh, Adriana Escobar for $5. It is almost 3 a.m., but I prefer to listen here than to watch the movie. Thank you. Adriana, uh, I thank you very much. And you must be on the East Coast or, or well... Central time? No, central. Uh, we will be wrapping up in nine minutes. I'm gonna. I can only go two hours tonight. So, um, Gary, you're rad. Here's some money. Well, thank you, Pete, for the five dollars. Uh, somebody thinks I'm cringy and angry. And angry. Uh, calling me a nerd though is uh, th yes, I'm a nerd. I could be cringy sometimes too. Shit, everybody can be. Um, thank you, Pete. Lady Miss for ten dollars. Thanks for watching this movie for all of us that won't, uh, that won't, uh, thanks for watching the movie for all of us that won't on your good advice. And maybe this will cover for some coffee you will need for staying up to review this movie for us. Great job. Thank you. And I can get two cups of coffee for that. And yeah, I'm going to, again, I'm going to take my time with my video review because I, well, I'll need to. So many d dumb things happen. It's like reviewing an episode of Star Trek Discovery. Bad reboot is a stain on Hollywood. They are a virus in Hollywood. Damon Lindelof just screwed up the Wokeman. I mean, destroyed it. Um, Alex Kurtzman's destroying Star Trek. Uh, there's two clowns running Lord of the Rings that are from Star Trek Four, so that are from Bad Reboot. Bad Reboot screwed up Westworld Season 2. Watch Critical Drinker's video on it. It's perfection. It is video perfection. Uh, and Jar Jar Abrams has screwed up Star Trek, screwed up Star Wars, and now he's going to screw up Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers, do not let this guy come and screw up your franchises. Don't. Jim McDonald, thank you for becoming a member of the Jaloja level. Ed uh, I appreciate you. Again, we'll get some membership stuff this weekend. Ed Powell for twenty four ninety nine. I thought there were more. I thought there was more good moments than uh, you seem to have seen. I give it a seven out of ten. But I always give Gary and Neurotic a ten out of ten. Well, thank you, Ed. Uh, it was no. It was there. There was. Uh, it was a bunch of moments with no interconnective tissue whatsoever. Um, did you ever feel like anybody was in danger? Uh, did you feel like that relationship between Kylo and, and, and Ray was real? Did that feel real? Uh, I mean, listen, if you think, I want you to, you know, get, you step away from the nostalgia and you try to look at it objectively. Uh, it's, it's, it's filled with plot holes, but if you enjoyed it, Ed, you're awesome. It's all good.
Uh, Sean P for two Canadian dollars. Optimus flying off in rocket shoes. Genius now. Really is. It really is. I'm going to look at the Transformers our whole different way. Thank you again, Ed. Uh, I appreciate you. And Sean P., I appreciate you as well. Jacob King, thank you for becoming a member at the Geloja level. Uh, guest 5 for $9.99. Uh, Star Wars is dead to me. I refuse to watch this stuff, uh, this guff of a film, and refuse to watch The Mandalorian 2. It's all Disney Star Wars nonsense. Without respect, we reject. Um, guest 5 for $9.99. I'm about there, to be honest with you. I'm going to finish up reviewing The Mandalorian because i got to finish what I start. Uh, will I review Season 2? I don't know. I don't know. If you ask me tomorrow, the answer will probably be no. Uh, I'm pretty set to walk away from Star Wars. I'm pre- I, 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 Like I said, I'm where I was at The Last Jedi. When I walked out of The Last Jedi, I just never wanted to talk about Star Wars again. It's dead to me. Uh, at, on, like, What else is there to say? I, I mean, I could tear up this movie, um, and I do need to, again, do a detailed review. But as far as like news articles, uh, you know, le- le- I'm sure there'll be some shots taken at fans and I'll rebut those. But like about the film, about the content, about Kathleen Kennedy, I don't know what else there is to say. Uh, for me, from me, I'll speak for myself. Sad Brokey for four ninety nine. If you guys want to watch the movie for free, go to Twitter, type Ryan Cannell and you'll see the movie. So you guys won't spend your money on this crap film. Well, RK Outpost uh, is, uh, that's kind of my YouTube Padawan. So uh, he should be careful <laughs> if he's sharing anything on Twitter. I would, I would, but I don't know if he is or not. Um, Jim McDonald for $10. Did you watch the Blink If You Miss It, John Williams and Jody Comer of Cameos? I saw Jody Comer. I didn't see John Williams. Enjoy the channel. Keep up sharing your passion. Thank you, Jim McDonald, for the $10. I missed the John Williams cam- uh, cameo, but I saw Wedge and Tilly's. That was cool. Uh, you're a drock for $5. After just now seeing it, I'm not sure what I feel because this was all over the place. I guess I'm confused and apathetic more than anything else. That's probably an accurate feeling because I was, yeah, I wasn't like fired up mad. Like I was the last Jedi. I was just apathetic. I was right there with you. Uh, bean with bacon for $2. Keep Favreau and Filoni, uh, keep Favreau and Filoni away from star Wars. Uh, well, they're there though. They're there. So far they've done okay, but again, it's a side quest. So being with bacon though is always being funny and I get it. Uh, R one three M four N N for $20. You bring sanity into the San Francisco mess we live in. Sunset district isn't as woke as other neighborhoods, but it's refreshing here. Nonetheless, but it's frustrating here. Nonetheless, sorry. Love your work and, and, uh, and conviction. Thank you. Uh, and Hey, we're, I'm not that far from the sunset and you're right. The sunset's kind of like, uh, it's like the, the suburbs and normal people live there. Uh, my, uh, well, not my store, but the original comic outpost used to be on Noriega. Um, Mexican Iron Man. Oh my God. Crisis and infinite Tijuana's me and me go. Thank you for saving us time and money. The exquisite sci-fi taste of French Bordeaux, wine, and filet mignon that is the expanse would have been ruined had I seen this train wreck. Thank you, Gary. We love you. And I love you too, man. And I'm sorry that the expanse is getting drowned out by this shite. People, please watch the expanse. It's the best show on television. It's on Amazon Prime. It is perfect sci-fi. It is perfect sci-fi. And you know what? Anybody who gives you any of those a-holes out there who are all about mud diversity and, and mud inclusion, um, that show is perfect for it. It is, it is diversity and inclusivity done per- right because they don't talk about it. They just make a show. That's it. That's it. It's, it's for kids, dog. It's for kids. Uh, I watched the movie at home. Where, uh, where were the TIE fighters during the big battle? Good question. Uh, plus, how do they pass items through the force connection? JS for $4.99? Good question. 
uh, because Jar Jar Abrams said, F it, I'm going to do what I want. Mark Martinez for $10, just finished watching watching it, terrible editing, editing, insane speed, poor plot rationale. And that's, I like that. Mark, poor plot rationale. Nothing made sense. Palpatine seemed like he couldn't decide who wanted to be the emperor. Kept switching his plans at the end. I know, right? It's like he, he had dementia. So maybe he, he lost it a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah, maybe Ray was fighting nothing. Maybe he was just like a crazy old man. She should have started asking him like real questions. Like, what's your name? What's your first name? I want you to become emperor. What's your first name? I don't know how to turn on the television. What's your first name? I just made boom, boom in my robes. You know, like that's probably what he, what he did. Uh, Jacob King, 499. Isn't it funny that the main characters have to destroy very phallic looking cannons to destroy the evil colonialists? Um, you know, that picture when Ray is, uh, is going up to fight Kylo on the death star. You ever see what's behind her? It's like a big boner. There's a giant boner here. We can find the picture. All I have to do is hit uh, Rise of Skywalker. We can we can end it on that. Uh, uh, right. It's called Rise of Skywalker, by the way. That's what the rise is. Uh, trailer. That'll get the right image. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. So yes. Yeah, so we get. We get. Did we get? Da, 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 da. Um. Nope. I just did the wrong thing. That went. Where'd it go? There we go. This right here. See, there's a big old boner behind her. That's some morning wood she's fighting right there. Sorry. Sorry to be crass. Hi, Cinema Queen. How are you? All right, two more Super Chats, and then we're going to have to make up the rest tomorrow. I do apologize, but it is 1 o'clock in the morning. My son is sleeping. He's got uh, he's got school tomorrow, and I probably have been keeping him up. So I will be back. Uh, we are doing Friday Night Tights, but I will do a Super Chat square up. We'll say 11 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow. Is that cool? Hopefully you can join it. Join us. If you do miss the Super Chat square up, it will be at Nerdrotic Live. Again, I apologize deeply. I cannot. I wish I can go the rest of the time, but like, yeah, uh, it's the it's a, it's a school night. It's a school night, and Nerdrotic Junior uh, is probably being kept awake by my booming loud voice. So, uh, Mark Martinez for ten dollars. Uh, poor plot uh, rationale. Palpatine seemed like he couldn't decide who wanted to be emperor. Kept switching plans. Jacob King. Thank you for the $4.99. Mark Martinez, thank you for the $10. Pinion for Canadian, $5. Ray looks through dagger like Mikey in Goonies. Yes, Ray and gang dressed as hobbits in cloaks. 5% space battles, 95% headshots. Did you notice the headshots? Like how many headshots there were? Pinion, you're brilliant. Thank you for the Canadian $5. Um, I'm going to pick up a lot of stuff once uh, I'm f I unfortunately have to see it again to review. Uh, this film screwed with me with no spit on it. I want my time back, says Thero Blackwell for $4.99. Uh, screwed me with no spit on it. Yeah, it did. Um, and you won't get your time back, but uh, you know what? Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Just voice your opinion, and you that's, that's how we get them back. Uh, dyslexia I have for $5. Stop asking questions. Watch new product, accept new product, excited for new product. Once again, stop asking questions. Watch new product, accept new product, excited for new product. Thank you, Dyslexia, I have for $5. Uh, for the final two Super Chats, Psych Thor. Uh, so Disney tells us you can be a mass murderer, kill your dad, still be redeemed, Get the girl and peacefully force fart yourself into heaven. <laughs> force fart is now my favorite saying ever. <laughs> Psych. Sick Thor, I love you. Thank you for the 10 bounds. Uh, force fart yourself into heaven. I so hope Ray gets 
force pregnant from this little kiss. X D. <laughs> God damn it. Force fart. I'm going to have to end on a force fart. Force semen. Sounds like there was no consent. Shame, shame. Says R3M4 and then I'm sure that spells something, right? Rhyme, 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 maybe for $5. LT showcase. There he is. Great meeting you tonight, bud. Doomcock with hashtag Doomcock was right. That's right. And LT showcase has a channel, everybody. Uh, and I will plug it on Friday night, but I got to cut this one out. And it sucks. I have to cut out with like the biggest crowd I've had since Game of Thrones. Um, so thank you. We had over 7,000 people watching. We got 2,300 2, likes. If you could hit like on the way out the door, that'd be great. Please like, share, and subscribe. Go to nerdrotic.com for my live stream schedule. There will be a super chat square up tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Pacific time. I want you all to have a great night. And remember that uh, Disney Star Wars doesn't like you. Uh, and don't forget that um, they coordinated attacks on fans. The Access Media is out there coordinating attacks on fans. And w as Doomcock says, without respect, we reject. The best way to, to stop, the only way this stops is if we stop giving them money. But also, voice your opinion. Staying quiet doesn't do shit. You can't sit on your hands. The Fandom Menace did fantastic work. Uh, we work together. Where we go from here? Well, we got the MCU, we got Doctor Who, we got Star Trek. But when it comes to Star Wars, uh, personally, I don't know. Personally, I don't know. I'll get back to you on that one. So I'll be working on my video. Keep an eye out for that. And I'll see you tomorrow. And you know what? We can take it out with some... We can... If you wait a second, I can take you out with some music. If I can get there. Yeah. We'll... we'll We'll do, uh, do beam me up a little beam me up. So thank you again, everybody. And remember not all who wander are lost. Nerderotic.com. Again, everyone, I appreciate you and I want you all go to sleep unless you're in another country and the sun's up on the other side of the world. Then go about your day. Be good to each other.